Alright, hello and welcome to episode 29 of Mind Chat. This week I have a friend of mine in the world that we have in front of us, Steve Snell, as a teacher here in Singapore. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing well. How are you, Colin? I'm fine, thanks for as asking. Nobody ever asks me that question. Well, I'm an inquirer. <laughs> you are an inquirer. Now, yeah, I've, I've, you've been doing Minecraft for a couple of years now, and uh, this is the first time we've got together in, in Mind Chat. And, and you kind of do um, a project with your students that's kind of unorthodox, if I can say that. Maybe some, some teachers that are listening may not understand what you're doing. So maybe give a background of, of what um, project you're doing with your with your students, and we'll, we'll take it from there, and maybe we can have a look at your world as it is. Yeah, okay. Well, this is our third unit. Um, we're a PYP school, so this is um, how we organize ourselves. Mm -hmm. And our central idea is people create organizations. We, just that, that's, ju that's the central idea. Oh, okay. It yeah, originally had people create organizations to support human enterprise and endeavor, mm -hmm. but we thought it was important for the kids to work that out for themselves. Um, so basically we have three year six classes, which is fifth grade if you're um, in the US. Mm -hmm. And each class is comprised of 15 to 20 kids and they're a village basically. Right. So each, each, they're all in the same one world basically. All three, all three classes are in this world. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this is the spawn point where we are. You can see the beautiful chaotic destruction that has been wrought upon it. <laughs> like a World War I battlefield. Well, yeah, as the kids get killed in Minecraft early, they, they start back here until we get the bed situation sorted out. Oh, yeah. And then so when they're here, they're fighting and they're building and all the trees have had their, their um, themselves half destroyed because the kids need the wood or whatever. Mm. And this is a road. I actually built this road. And this road, I built a road in each direction towards each village mm. so that the kids could find their way back from the spawn point. It was becoming such a pain in the neck having to teleport them back all the time. And it's part of the experience, really, having them travel back. And it means that they meet each other when they die. Along the way. Um, but your road has seen better days. <laughs> the kids can't help themselves. They smash it up. I mean, they need cobblestone for whatever they're making, so they just take it from the road. They just pillage the resources. But see, they need to make to make stairs. There were stairs here, yeah. so they've stolen the stairs because they obviously needed them for something else. <laughs> <laughs> so why Minecraft? Why what what drew drew you towards Minecraft for this particular unit of inquiry? Well. We've been, I've done this, this is the second year at Chatsworth where we've been doing it and we did it at my old school in Beijing mm -hmm. and before that we actually had a giant board, like a board game pinned to the back wall of the classroom made of paper showing a bird's eye view of a land with a river going through it and some hills, um, some marshy areas and a couple of bridges and then the kids built houses on graph paper and they had the prices for all the different items that they could buy. So if they were building their house out of brick, it was way more expensive, but then if something happened later on, it was um, sturdier and less likely to be destroyed. So the kids also, well, they were all essentially all farmers. So then we, the teachers posed problems and it was pretty much the same unit. We weren't a PYP school when I was doing that, but um, for all intents and purposes, we were a PYP school. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we basically were doing a, a unit on governance and how governments form. And so, yeah, that really, um, it's organic because the kids end up, well, we need a government. You know, I'm sick of everyone doing this and that. And, you know, I'm sick of Johnny coming and doing this and taking my stuff. And now he's building a house right next to my house. And, you know, there's no rules about that. And the kids form it. And so this sort of takes away the arbitrary nature of the teacher interfering. Mm. Because in this, I can turn monsters off for a while mm -hmm. until the kids get established and then turn monsters on. And then when they're dealing with that, I can turn 
the difficulty up to hard, so they need to eat all the time. So that so firstly they have to you know build a house, and then secondly they're fighting the monsters and making themselves secure, and then they need to start you know thinking about what's going on in relation to keeping themselves from starving to death. So you basically start the kids off in adventure mode with basically nothing. With and, nothing. And you're telling them, okay, this is your community now. This is your village and town. Make it work. Yeah. I basically put them into random teams, which we called families. And we had some interesting conversations about, does that make me the mom? And does that make me the dad? And, yeah. you know, so we, we, we had some fun with that. Yeah. And, yeah, so then they had to to work it out what they were going to do and we really we've only really been setting them very few challenges the first challenge we did was they had to make a house and that after on the second session we were going to turn the monsters on mm -hmm. if you come down here I'll show you the uh, secret entrance oh. to to our um, to my class's village my class named theirs mountain bay sands mountain base ants Sands, like Marina Bay Sands. Oh, yeah, nice. because we're on the top of a mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. this here is the secret side entrance. I don't know how secret it is anymore because it's been in for a while. Mm -hmm. um, they decided they needed a secret entrance because they were sick of everyone um, coming in through the gate that they had originally. Mm -hmm. And they bricked it up. Now, um, you got me to come in to your student's world one day. Um, and you made me attack them. <laughs> yep. And I felt very bad doing it, but the minute they saw me, they just attacked me because I had a weird name. They didn't know who I was. Yep. What's your reasoning behind getting me to come along as a stranger and basically just kind of ambushing them and, you know, testing their resolve and the reactions? <coughs> well... <laughs> They the are, fun aspect. Well, they're fairly stable um, at the moment. So I want them to think that the Year 7s, who were Year 6s last year, still have this on their computer. Okay. So you logging in with that name that I told you to log in with makes them think that that boy, who's still at our school but is in Year 7, could get on again. Right. Have you told um, this boy about that? I told him. I told him. <laughs> I told him to play it cool, and right. he's like, "Yeah, whatever. That's not a problem." Yeah, he was a good kid. He was the he was the captain of my football team last year. He's a really nice boy. Um, so yeah, we we've done that, set that up. So the tech director and I, and maybe you again if you're up for it, oh, yeah. will attack them again, but this time really fully, properly attack them with names of kids from last year. Yeah, and to they'll they'll be like, "Mr. Snell, but what? Why? Why? Why don't you?" Uh, you you um, teleport them away. Why don't you ban them? Why don't you kick them? And I say, well, I think this is a problem you can handle. What are you going to do about it? You know, I think this game has gotten to the point where you're not learning anything from it anymore. So show me what you should do about these guys. You know, I, I might say something like that. Mm. Uh, depends if they even talk to me about it. They'll they think they're pretty tough. <laughs> they <laughs> like most ten year olds. They're really into Minecraft, and so they really know it. And even though I'm pretty good at computer games, it's a challenge for me to successfully grief them. Yeah. I was surprised. Like, I know all your kids are, I'm sure, really lovely and everything. But I'm, I'm thinking it would happen to any kid around the world when they see somebody strange. It'll just kind of greet them by actually hitting them in Minecraft. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, when the kids found out that PvP was on, uh, they were like, wait, PvP's on? Mm. And then straight away because it wasn't on originally but I had not done that intentionally I forgot I was I went in and I turned everything off because I wasn't having monsters I wasn't having day and night I wasn't having weather I turned all that off uh, I turned off the nether I turned off everything but in the in the uh, meantime I turned off PvP which I had intended to leave on and so of course it popped up PvP is enabled when I turned it on uh... and the kids went what? wait and they instantly started attacking each other because they thought that I was going to turn it back off again. Right. So it is interesting. And then for the next couple of days, we had all kinds of shenanigans with kids just totally 
taking each other on all of the time. So as any student kind of copped on, okay, there's a link between our central idea of our unit of inquiry and what on earth is going on in the world. Basically, they're trying to build a village that's nice and lovely and people can stay there, but people are continuously killing people. Have they come to the conclusion, okay, well, we're doing a project on governments. Should we kind of have a government? Yeah. Anybody? So one of my girls cottoned on the day before we actually started Minecraft, the day before we were making the families. Mm. And so she, she cottoned on to it, but they were all so Minecraft, 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 Minecraft. They were yeah, so yeah. ready for Minecraft that they weren't listening to Smart Girl. Yeah. And, yeah. and so that went by, but it did not take more than maybe the middle of the second session before someone walked over and tapped the central idea on the inquiry board and just said, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then so, I mean, we've, I mean, we really, we only do a bit of Minecraft. I mean, often, I'd say we do it just about every day for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And usually in that time, we let the kids run free. Right. But they've constructed all this. I mean, if these kids were normally, if they were playing Minecraft at home, they would have burrowed down into the earth looking for diamonds mm. and they would have been creating all kinds of stuff and they would have been all through the nether. I turned the nether back on. The, 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 what's in the nether isn't really um, you know, helping them achieve their goals so they're not really, not really exploring the nether. Yeah. Uh, you can see a nether portal over here actually in the distance. It, it's one that they... I, I, they built one here and they used it and then... While some kids were in the nether, someone sabotaged. <laughs> so I can imagine the chaos. That oh, it, was, <laughs> it was funny though. They were complaining, and and, and it was very funny because it was a it was a super Minecraft kid that was trapped in the nether. <laughs> Serves him right. I mean, the the super Minecraft kids, um, you know, they they're very elitist. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're not leading the government. Right. So we, we got a government really quickly. And we'd watched, we watched a few videos as well. So um, there's some good brain pop videos. There's some good behind the news videos about governments and all kinds of things like that. And so we watched a bunch of them. And very quickly, we realized that what we'd made is a direct democracy. And yesterday, they determined... So this is two and a half weeks after we started. Yesterday, they dis discovered that really the direct democracy uh, isn't isn't doing it because they vote on absolutely every issue. Mm. And so they they thought they were a representative democracy because they picked a government. Yeah. But every time the government wants to make a new rule, they have to bring it to the people and there's a vote. And it slows them down and... You know, we watched a video about North Korea and one of the kids was like, see, if we had North Korea's system, we'd get things done. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but then someone was like, well, yeah, but then everyone would be starving to death. And then someone said, but we are starving to death. <laughs> There's no food. There's a little garden over there. Oh, no, they're, 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 starting to, they're starting to get the farming worked out. I mean, you do have those couple of kids that are really so into Minecraft, it takes them a little while to realize that um, kind of focus themselves on the educational aspect. As opposed on what to, needs to happen. Yeah. Right? On, on what they need to do. And it's positive peer pressure because you know, I got them to identify on a scale of one to five how good they were in Minecraft and so all the fives I put them down and separated them and then I put the ones and twos with them and then I put the threes and fours amongst it so that every group has at least one, often two people that know more about Minecraft than I do and you know I, I, I know the ins and outs of Minecraft. Yeah, and you're using Minecraft EDU as we can see here as well. Is this the first time, did you use that in Beijing or? No, in Beijing we didn't use uh, EDU. We had a bucket server, yeah, uh, and we had world edit, yeah, 
And I kind of liked World Edit because I could build structures really fast, but actually it's not really about me building structures, so... Um, yeah, the fill and clear tool is pretty good in Minecraft EDU. You can build your oh, yeah, but roads quickly, but yeah, MC Edit is crazy. Yeah, it's just amazing. But you could do all the MC Edit brushes in this. Mm. I was fiddling around with that the other day. I See down there that um, mound of sand? Yeah. When I had a massive uh, fill accident <laughs> and filled um, the, fuss, the, the, the immediate world from this corner out with obsidian or something. No, not obsidian, uh, bedrock. Mm. Before I could pr press undo, the server crashed under the strain. <laughs> and so when I came back, I couldn't undo it. I had to go and clear it, and so I was left with <laughs> a big empty space. Yeah. So I thought it was sand and then experimented with brushes, and so I got some reasonable edging. I mean, that doesn't look too good, but it's not a block like it used to be. Yeah. Did you... Um have you any teachers that are new to the school this year that kind of didn't didn't know what was going on with Minecraft or yeah everybody on board or uh, they're all totally on board they're yeah. totally on board and they w I've got one who has a a grasp of the basics um, and then the, and she did it with us last year and but she's just not into Minecraft you know yeah, yeah that's fine. And, but she's into games. She's big into Halo. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, the new guy uh, hadn't even heard of Minecraft, or, or, or maybe he had but never seen it or something. I'm like, how can you? How yeah. can that happen? Well, it can happen because he was working in Egypt. So right, yeah. It's the last few years, and that's when Minecraft's been big, right? The last few years. But I would have imagined that international kids at the International School of Cairo would have played Minecraft, but. <laughs> think so you'd like to think so yeah yeah so what's the end result of this you you're finishing up before christmas this project yep what obviously um learning objectives do you want your kids to come away with we basically learning outcomes, we, sorry. yeah well we want them to last year they came up with the united nations oh really yeah so our Concepts are connection, function, and reflection. Right. And so we're looking at, you know, obviously how organizations and, and governments and so on function. And so we watched, you know, United Nations videos and World Health Organization video. I watched that one today, United Nations yesterday. And the kids that are already, the governments have already started to talk to each other and we've had one sort of big government meeting and they've started to come up with rules that apply to everyone all of the time because, you know, they had, well, you know, he took my diamond sword and, um, but he was in your village, not our village, so we can't punish him or, you know, that sort of thing. So now they've just basically said it's a blanket there's rules against stealing, there's rules against griefing, and there's rules against killing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you are, although the enforcement side of those rules are questionable because my class had a jail at, that I built for them at their request out of bedrock because they can't get bedrock. And it was over here near the side where kind of where you are now there's this sort of blank space here was where the jail was there was a few cells and so the government could request me as sort of like representing their authority to teleport someone into the prison and teleport them back out when the government thought that they had learned their lesson in the end it was just times so I think murder is 10 minutes <laughs> now think about, think about that right murder is yeah. 10 minutes <laughs> is there anything worse than murder well the only thing in this game that's worse than murder is being in jail yeah because you're not playing Minecraft right basically and, and they found that 2 minutes wasn't enough 2 minutes just wasn't enough and so they went with 10 and once we got to 10 we haven't had a murder since about the third person went to jail for it. 
because they were like, 10 minutes? I'm in jail for 10 minutes. Yep, you can log off Minecraft and log back on in 10 minutes, mate. Or you can keep trying to escape because they also added on five minutes every time you escape. <laughs> now, they can't escape normally because it's, because it's a um, bedrock, bedrock prison. They can't, yeah. they can't tunnel out of it. But what they do is they jump up and down until they die of starvation. Oh. And if they get into trouble, if they get a chance, they get to their their chest, quick smart, drop off all their important items so that when they die in the prison, they don't lose their stuff. So as soon as they're accused, as soon as someone says to me, Mr. Snell, please teleport Jaden to the prison, I teleport him to wherever I am so that he can't then (laughs) teleport his stuff or put his stuff in the chest. Uh, Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. But it sounds like they they kind of go through a whole process of actually figuring out that having a kind of a, a village or a community without any governance is crazy and chaotic. And oh, some, some of the most powerful learning experiences that I've been involved with have been through Minecraft this year and last year. We had last year, the, some of the boys who were really into Minecraft wanted this to be more about Minecraft and less about government. So they organized a coup, basically. They got everyone to vote the old government out because there's always a clause, you know. The government's in for five days unless 10 people um, join in and say we need a new election. So they got that on the promise that everyone would be allowed to do whatever they want, no one would be bossing anyone around, and they voted the government out. And that was just before lunchtime, and I had the government, two of the kids in the government were in tears. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's not fair. You know, it's like, what are you going to do about it? And they said, well, why don't we just explain to everyone what happened and get them to vote those guys out? And they did. We had a coup and a counter coup in the space of one lunchtime. (laughs) And that one of those boys that was in the coup was on the verge of tears and he was really mad. But the reflections that were written about it that afternoon were some of the best reflections I've ever seen. Wow. Yeah, and it's happening again now. You know, we have kids say, the only reason you want to vote me out is because I'm getting you to do things. The only reason that you want him to be the president is because he doesn't say anything, <laughs> right? This is the, mi- the Minecrafty boys. Yeah. They want to, they, they've come around now. They've come around now, but early on, those really switched on kids... Um, they realize, you know, we can make a great community here and then these Minecrafty boys want to not do anything with it. They want to go down and, you know, look for lava pools and rare earth elements and so on. Yeah, because it's hard because you're not really giving them explicit directions, you know. You're giving, you're like a inquiry teacher that you are. You're basically saying, there you go. It's a sandbox. It's the, the, Minecraft yeah. is the ultimate sandbox. Yeah. So at the end of it all, Steve, what's the uh, what's your summative assessment going to be? What's it going to look like? Well, our summative assessment last year took the place of a of the form of a, like a reflection journal, and we're doing something similar this time, except we're opening it up so it doesn't have to be in writing. Right. So I've got kids that are screencasting. You know, they've taken different shots of the village and then are talking about what's going on and talking about the process. I've put lots of videos, I've taken lots of videos of the kids actually having their discussions because although we we spend 45 minutes every day in Minecraft, we also spend time every day talking about our village and talking about our problems and and our responses and our government. And then we also spend time purely reflecting on it so they're building up a file of all kinds of evidence of their reflection. You know, yeah. some of it they're writing and some of it they're just recording. I don't know. Some of them are making a comic book. I got kids that are making a movie. Mm-hmm. And they, some kids go in and they just screen record the whole time they're in there. Uh-huh. So they'll and – and my class is super techy. Yeah. They, they, they're really switched on when it comes to all this sort of stuff. Awesome. Well, it sounds like it's, that's important to note to p- 
people that are listening, you know, like it's not a Minecraft project. It's Minecraft is a tool that you're using to yep. kind of guide them along and, and see if they actually come up with things that may not have happened when you used your old like game board in your your previous yeah. school. I said to my class, as soon as it becomes about Minecraft, is as soon as it gets switched off, because we're not here to play Minecraft. We're here to see how we organize ourselves. That's our um, transdisciplinary thing. Yeah. That's awesome. I think that's it's one of the first times we've um, talked about like a governance project, for want of a better term, on Mind Chat. So that was that's really cool to listen to that because I don't think I pre I, pre I pretty much presume I think that most of my teachers I've interviewed have been on creative mode and not the hard slog of survival. But um, in your case, that makes perfect sense. Yep. So thanks a lot for joining me, Steve, and maybe. Um, We'll uh, maybe we'll come back and reflect on it all after it's all done and dusted, and we'll see what what um, your final thoughts on it this year were. Yeah, you. thanks for having me. No problem. All right, that's the end of episode twenty nine of Mind Chat. See you next time. Bye bye.